Hello everyone, this is Jozef Not here and in this video I will talk about transport equations. Here you see the finished results of this tutorial where I show you the transport of a passive scalar and I want to explain you what diffusion and convection mean. The goals are the following. I want you to understand the solver that we will be using, the scalar transport foam solver, how you can set up a case from scratch. Up until now we used cases, tutorial cases that came with open foam, but now I will set up a case from scratch and I want to show you how and which values you have to change for that. And I really want you to understand uh, the two main transport phenomena, the convection and the diffusion. For that, we will simulate five seconds of a one-dimensional transport of a passive scalar. And I will post-process the results. As I mentioned, we will use the scalar transport foam solver. The official description states that it solves a transport equation for a passive scalar. So nothing really fancy. So there is a transport equation in the solver for a passive scalar. Now let's come to the theory. This transport equation looks like this. You have a partial time derivative a divergence of the velocity and your passive scalar and a Laplacian term. So the convection term is this one where you have the divergence of a constant velocity field and your scalar. Now, it is very important that your velocity field is constant over the simulation over time. So if you think of this value of the scalar t as, for example, the temperature, then we assume an isothermal flow field that does not change with time and is temperature independent. So this means that the density, for example, or the kinematic or the viscosity are independent of temperature. And we assume a stationary velocity field. And in the diffusion term, we have the second spatial derivative of our scalar and diffusion constant, the diffusivity, which is assumed to be constant and it regulates the magnitude of the diffusion. And the uh, passive scalar means that you have this value t in the partial time derivative in the convection term and in the diffusion term. And as I mentioned, you can think of that as a certain temperature or you will also find these transport equations in simulations in cases where you have reactions and where you have species and you also transport the species with such transport equations. Now you, in those equations you might have additional source terms but you always have a convection and a diffusion and it's very crucial to understand these two phenomena. And for that I will make a parameter study where I will change the velocity and the diffusivity. At first I will set the velocity to 0, 0, 0 and with that the general equation reduces to uh, pure diffusion because this term becomes 0, velocity is 0 and then you have a pure diffusion. Then I will change the value of the velocity and I will set the diffusivity to 0. Then you have pure convection and then I will combine these two phenomena and I will show you the results if you have convection and diffusion at the same time. So I will do 11 simulations but don't be concerned the simulations are very fast and why is this important? I want you to understand why this is important I mentioned that you have these transport equations of a passive scalar in case of temperature, for example, of chem or chemical species. But if you think 
of the Navier-Stokes equations, the momentum equations, you also have these terms, convection and diffusion. If you think of the this S tensor, you know that in the S tensor you have the gradient of the velocity, and with this nabla, in case of uh, in an incompressible flow, you have also Laplacian here, and the, the viscosity corresponds to this diffusivity here for the Navier-Stokes equation. So the viscosity is the diffusivity. But in this case, you do not have a passive scalar anymore, but you substitute the temperature or T, the passive scalar, with the velocity itself, and you're transporting the velocity with itself. And you have the diffusion addition. Of course, you have the pressure gradient in the momentum equations, but as I mentioned, you can have additional terms, but you will mostly have these two main phenomena, the, the convection and the diffusion, and I want you to understand these phenomena. So let's just jump in the simulations. At first, I open up a Nautilus and I will open up the source code of, of scalar transport form. I will immediately go applicate to application solvers. It's a basic solver. It's called tr scalar transport form and I open it up in gedit. Okay, here is the header. Description solves a uh, transport equation for a passive scalar. Then a couple of header files are included. The time is created, the mesh is created, and the fields are created. And this create fields.h can be found in the same folder, so I open it up. At first, the volume vector scalar field t is read in, so which means that we have to specify a value for our passive scalar in the zero folder, then the constant velocity field is read in, which means that we have to additionally define the velocity in our case folder in zero, then uh, tra uh, transport properties are read in and the diffusivity dt is read in. Then, if we continue on, then we come to the time looping, and here this simple transport equation is being solved. Uh, you have the time derivative, the convection term, and the diffusion term. And you have FV options, but we will not use them, so here you really have zero. Good, then I want to set up the case, but I will not do that here in Nautilus, but rather in the terminal. By now I hope that you know how to use the terminal. So I will just go into the tutorial folder. It's a tutorial, basic, and then scalar transport form. And now we have here one case, the Pitts daily case, which is a two-dimensional simulation. Now I told you that I want to set up the case from scratch. How can you do that? From scratch does not mean that I will type in all the dictionaries from scratch. What people usually do is that they take a case that is working for a certain solver and they are modifying it so that they get the case setup, the boundaries, the simulation settings. This is what I am going to do. So let's just go into uh, Pete's Daily tutorial and let's take a look what files and dictionaries you need for scalar transport form. If I type in ls uh, space star, then we find uh, files that we need. So in zero, we need, as I mentioned, the file for the passive scalar and for the velocity. If I open this up, the passive scalar, here it has the, the dimensions of Kelvin the internal field and then the boundaries. For the velocity, it's similar. 
meters per second and here they defined a non-uniform list but we we could also uh, use a uniform value and then in the bottom you will find um, boundaries and then in constant you have the mesh folder and transport properties the dictionary called transport properties and here you define only one value the value for dt this diffusivity and then you have in system your uh, control dict fb schemes and fb solutions and if i make this a little bit smaller and i open up a second terminal and I go into the previous tutorial that we did for the shock tube where we did one dimensional simulation of a shock tube using compressible, sonic, foam and laminar. Here you have the shock tube tutorial. And if we compare now the two cases, here in zero we need T and U and for the sonic foam we needed P, T and U and we also had Mag U which means that we do not need these two files for scalar transport foam, but we need these two files for scalar transport foam. Then in constant, we had the dictionary for the thermophysical properties and for the turbulence properties. We do not need those for scalar transport foam, but we are needing transport properties, which we do not have in this case. And in system, we have control dict FV schemes and FV solutions, and then the dictionaries for sampling and setting the fields. And here we also have this uh, control dict FV schemes and FV solutions. But if I open up FV schemes, for example, you need different entries for scalar transport form and for sonic foam so uh, for example the ddt scheme so the scheme for the time here you see this, it's the same and also the gradient schemes are the same but the divergence schemes are different and this is important if we would use the fb schemes like this then the scalar transport foam solver would not know how to discretize the, uh, the convection term, for example. So we cannot use these entries for scalar transport form. So we have to modify it. And this is the reason why I will use this shock tube case with the one dimensional mesh and I will modify it so scalar transport form understands all the entries. So I will mix and match. And for that, on the left hand side, I will exit the Pitts Daily case and I will copy the folder shock2 from the compressible tutorials, Sonic from Laminar, to the tutorials basic and scalar transport form. So how do you do that? I hope you know it by now, but I will show you how you do it. So I will copy a folder with dot dot. I am telling my system that I want to copy something not from scalar transport form, but go upwards to basic. But I also want to exit basic. So I go to the tutorials folder and then in tutorials, go into compressible, then into sonic foam and laminar and copy the shock tube case to to this folder to scalar transport form enter and now we have the shock tube case here so i will close it this now and i will not have a shock tube simulation so i will rename it to transport underscore base case and i will enter transport underscore base case and I will now modify this case setup so let's just enter zero we do not need mag u and the pressure because there is no pressure in the transport equation that we want to solve so we all only have t and u 
and t is initialized with one but we will change that a little bit later and we have the two boundaries that we also had in the previous tutorial sides and empty and then for the velocity we have zero 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 and again sides and empty so we will just leave that for now in zero dot org we have the same values we could just leave that but i will delete these two files anyway so we only have the passive scalar or the temperature if you want and the velocity more important is the constant folder because here we have the thermophysical properties and the turbulence properties which we do not need so i will delete them but we need here a transport uh, dictionary for the transport properties for dt and what i will do i will just copy the file from the pits daily tutorial and i will copy it here into the constant folder and now we have the correct uh, dictionary in constant and we will modify the dt values in this file if i go to polymesh here we will have the mesh files later on if we execute block mesh let's just take a look at the geometry it's the same geometry as in the previous tutorial in the shock tube case so our geometry is going from minus 5 till plus 5 in the x direction and from minus 1 till plus 1 in the y and the z direction we have one block made up by these eight vertices and we will have 1000 cells in the x direction and one cell in the y direction and one cell in the z direction and we will do a one-dimensional simulation where we only solve the equations or the one transport equation in the x direction and not the y and not the z and the, the y and the z direction are defined by this empty boundary before i create the mesh i will enter the system folder and i want to show you the let's just start with fb schemes and uh, now fb schemes as i mentioned we have here the discretization schemes for sonic foam so this is not good scalar transport foam does not need these entries so what i do i will delete these files that were set up for sonic foam and i will copy the files from pits daily which which was set up for specifically for scalar transport foam so i copy from here control dict to here then fv schemes and fv solution now now we have it and i want to open up fv schemes okay so we are using these discretization schemes i will not change them in the next tutorial we will take a look at the discretization schemes and how you change them and what the influences are and i will not change the values in fv solution i will change or some settings here in control dict so we are using scalar transport form we are starting at zero and we want to simulate five seconds five and we will use a delta t of 0 0.01 and i will use a write control of runtime and I want to say after one, two, three, four, and five seconds. So I will save now my control dict with control O and I exit with control X. And we will not sample, but we will use the set fields utility to set the fields. In the default 
field values I will leave the velocity with 0, 0, 0. This was also the value in the dummy file, but I will just leave it. And But I will change the volume scalar field T. I will change it to 0. So I, at first I want to set all cells to 0. I delete the pressure value because we do not have a pressure. And then I want to create one region, one box that is reaching from minus 0 0.5 till plus 0 0.5. So this is a box in the exact center of a geometry. If you remember back, the geometry is going from minus 5 to plus 5 in the x direction. Now I want to define a box in the center. And within this box, I will set the cells, the values of the cells within this box to 1 for the, the passive scalar. So we will have a velocity of 0, 0, 0 in the entire geometry and we will have a value of 1 in the center and everywhere else we will have 0. So now I exit and I will create the mesh with block mesh and I will set the fields. If I open up the velocity, it's zero, zero, zero still. But now for T, we have a non-uniform list with 1000 entries, with 900 entries of zero and 100 entries of one in the center. Here are the ones and then again zero and then the two boundaries. Good. Let's just take a look at the geometry and the initial conditions. I will create my dummy file for ParaView. I just save it. Now I open it up in ParaView. Let's wait until ParaView loads. And I will use this transport underscore base case as a base case and I will make copies of this base case. But I click apply and there you see the geometry. You see the mesh or not, it's very fine or rather fine. T is in the center from minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5 has the value of 1 and then in the rest of the domain we have a value of 0. So this is more or less a numerical case again but this numerical case should show you the influence of convection and diffusion. Okay so now I close ParaView, I will exit the base case and now I will make copies of this base case. And I want to do 11 simulations, so I will set up 11 cases, which means I make 11 copies. So, transport underscore base case, and I will call them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. 9 and 10 and 11. Now we have 11 identical copies. We have to change the velocity and the diffusivity accordingly, according to this list. But at this point I will stop and I will conclude the first part of this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something. I would like to thank you for watching and I hope that I will see you in the second part of this tutorial.